Good evening, everyone. Welcome to today's panel discussion on the future of HCP engagement in pharma industry, presented by Viva System and hosted by ET Helper. As we all know, the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted the pharmaceutical industries in many ways. Companies have started to adopt digital technologies according to the business needs and developed a robust digital transformation strategy. One such change we see is in the HCP engagement. And in India, traditionally, the pharma go-to market revolved around face-to-face -face engagement with HCPs. And it's been a successful model till COVID hit us and caught, a, caught us all off guard. So the pandemic has forced the companies to change the ways of working, like in-person interactions were significantly restricted. Pharma companies had to put together alternative ways of engaging with HCPs to continue business as usual. This led to a heightened usage of digital channels uh, like the email, virtual meetings, webinar, WhatsApp, or SMS, telephone calls, etc. So the pharma companies have now slowly started using the hybrid engagement model, the multi-channel multi way of doing business. However, pharma companies will need to learn how to effectively in integrate multiple channels and leverage data and insights to get a 360-degree view of the customer to figure, figure out the right mix of engagements to meet each HCP's individual needs. And also, IT plays an important role in this transformation by providing right tools to support and enhance sales and marketing team's effectiveness. So the future of HCP engagement in pharma industry becomes a very crucial topic. Today, we have an elite panel of pharma leaders with us who are part of this transformation journey. We have Mr. Axel Pereira, Group CIO, Landmark Pharmaceutical Limited, Mr. Govind Joshi, CIO, USP Private Limited, Mr. Anand Nema, Country Manager, India, Viva Systems. So without further ado, let's understand their perspective and learn from their experience on the topic. And to begin with, I would like to ask, how has the digital transformation journey been like in the pharma industry like over the last two decades? And I'm sure you must have seen this uh, evolving during your career. And I would like to take the question first to Mr. Edson. Yeah, thanks Pratiba. I think before I answer how that evolution has happened in pharma journey, the digital, I would like to say how the digital journey in our own lives has changed. Okay. And it's very important end of the day, what is digital about? It's about customer experience. It's about the perception. And it's about the change of technology, the way we are using it today. I mean, I cannot imagine a day when I get up today without my mobile alarm. And I've become so tuned to my calendar, to my events, to my notification, and to using technology. And if I look back at the two decades that I've been in this industry, I've spent about 30 odd years in this industry. And in the way the medical rep used to meet the HCPs, meet the doctors, the way the collaboration was happening, uh, the way the engagement was happening, it was a lot of face-to-face, -face, a lot of face-to-face -face were happening. And, you know, the even the visual aid, you know, the, the medical rep would go with a bag of samples, visual aid folder, seek an appointment with a doctor. Most of it was through the landline phones and probably in the 20 odd years towards the, you know, early 2000, we started with the mobile usage became a penetration. Then we started bringing the Salesforce automation systems in different forms, started getting in, you know, all our call planning on a digital calendar. And still, I did not feel that the doctors were accepting technology or they were in tune with the digital tools that were there. Over a period of time, I suddenly started feeling that the doctors started getting tuned with the technology. They started using the internet better. You know, when they had a doubt about a drug, about an adverse event or a contraindication, they started reading online. They would go and read the Martindale journals online. You know, the SIMS documents, MIMS documents online. So that whole switch started happening. And last but not the least, the last two years has broken. You know, that whole digital space has broken. And it has erupted. And I would say it's the eruption of a volcano today. The whole journey now, you know, people started believing that, yes, digital can work. Technology can work. It can optimize, bring in efficiencies. 
bring in transparency you know people can communicate people can connect and i think that's the journey that everyone is seeing and i think today in our region the i think the highest impact has been of digital is in the covid era and this is here to stay huh? i can tell you this is not going to go back i'm not saying face to face is not needed if you want to build a relationship you want to build uh, build an uh, any engagement face to face is needed but technology supported by the digital framework is definitely going to enhance things going forward efficiency is going to come in productivity is going to come in visibility and transparency of information today there's a mass amount of data information available Yes, digital is here to stay. That is for sure. Uh, so, with that, I would like to ask the same question to Mr. Uh, Govind. Uh, what kind of digital transformation you have seen in the last two uh, decades? And I'm sure you must have seen this evolve during your career. Your uh, inputs, please. So, I've been uh, in pharma not for last twenty years, but of course, as part of the career. Uh, the number of touch points uh, which used to uh, be there for an scp or for a doctor uh, that those have definitely increased a lot um, edsel covered a lot of point uh, points wherein how how the mr used to visit uh, with all of his physical assets and so called content and bags and now almost every second company has empowered the mrs uh, with digital equipments like ipads or uh, uh, say android devices and now all of those contents uh, the field force is using the real bolte na real content electronic content digital content and its touch points have greatly increased and of course it has helped the organization analyze in a greater detail uh, the behavior of its customer so and uh, it is so the penetration of digital uh, when we compare a pharma industry with a with a consumer or bfsi industry i would say pharma is still uh, in terms of penetration still not there to to that extent because we operate in a pull mode rather than a push mode Uh, in a consumer or a BFS, I I can offer you a coupon. I can attract uh, you with a jackpot, and all those things are there. But uh, we we deal with a special entity here called as SCP, and of course, as uh, Mr. Parira told, ki their adaptiveness has increased, but still that entity remains a special one in terms of the availability of his. towards towards such uh, network i would say or there is a lot of noise in the market when it comes to digital and uh, we have to kill this noise very carefully with the right content and that's that's what uh, uh, i think edsel also touched upon ki okay now their adoption has gone up but still the way it is for some of the other verticals it is not going to be the same for pharma it is going to be a niche play always with those scps because we know catching up a doctor for a patient itself is a challenge for for a pharma uh, mr on field that one minute that he gets or 30 second that gets he gets how efficiently or how effectively he is going to use that um, and how digital is going to help them help him uh do that better he is going to be uh, a scene to uh, look out for in coming days i think so the penetration of digitization pharma has just started and we have long way to go and i would like to bring in mr anandas comments here on that uh, mr anandas your points yeah thanks thanks pratiba i guess edsel and govind have really covered most of things right from edsel he said that from digital from a personal space to a pharma space i think he gave examples as well right so uh, that is that that's how the transformation has happened over the last uh, two decades you know i have been associated with pharma industry for about 25 years in fact i started as a medical rep way back in 95 96 so i could 
I could, uh, you know, relate well, you know, taking a bag and going to the doctors, giving samples, promoting the products, using the print visual aids, right? All of that, we were doing it. In fact, you know, sending the report to the headquarters, it used to be on a paper report form matter, right? So you write everything and then, you know, you put it into an envelope and then post it that, then it became an inline letter uh, and stuff. But if you look at it today, how has it happened that the rep engages with the doctors on a digital front? You know, hybrid way, which Adzel mentioned, he uses the iPad today, go and talk to the doctors, communicate interactive content. And when he com comes back and he also, you know, sends the report using the same device which he has got on his hand. So that's how, um, you know, the transformation has happened. I think we all witnessed that. I think we are a part of the journey as well. So, and, and uh, you know, I totally agree with both of them that digital is going to stay. We need to watch out this space very, very carefully. Yes. Pharma is always in India is slightly slow compared to other industry on digital, but I think we pick up, we pick up in a very, very, uh, uh, you know, speed way. And I think we will, we will probably, um, you know, supersede other industries uh, when we pick up. Uh, that's, that's what we have witnessed over the last uh, two decades. As uh, Mr. Anantan mentioned about the XCP engagement and how it has evolved over the years, I would want to know how did your organization go about addressing the issue of restricted access to HCPs? Is restricting access or providing proper access? So, of course, USV as an organization, uh, we are we have been adopting uh, enterprise systems for last two decades as, as a history. Uh, for last almost 13 years, we are using CRM uh, for the field force. We have a field force around five to six thousand in numbers, which is which is huge. Uh, recently. Uh, post our ERP upgrades and all those things, which we did in 2018, we have also started revamping the CRMs uh, or the field force uh, related systems, uh, wherein let it be things like, they used to detail like both of them told Nanta and Edsel, ki physical detailing used to happen. Now the MRs are doing a digital detailing wherein the entire content uh, has been prepared and streamed onto their end devices uh, so we we have we have equipped the MRs with the ipads and now the detailing part is happening in a digital manner rather than a paper format secondly and most importantly the number of digital touch points so there is a sort of omni channel uh, engagement that has been initiated as part of few of the uh, applications that we use so uh, last financial year we adopted salesforce as one of our partners uh, in the journey wherein uh, the digital communication let it be an sms whatsapp or email all three formats uh, all three channels uh, apart from the physical channel of course uh, the communications are being targeted of course a lot of scp profiling and personalization and all, all those things have uh, have taken the center stage now so as part of the business strategy also digital plays an important uh, aspect how, how to influence the customer digitally now and have digital as one of the drivers uh, in the business strategy also wherein the driver can be used to leverage the customer behavior and ultimately the business output more rather than the conventional way of looking at digital or IT as a support function. So that's that's the biggest change uh, that the last uh, two, three years, uh, I would say uh, the entire pharma industry must have seen. We also as an organization are a party to it. And uh, our roadmap also is now very clear in terms of the adoption when it comes to the digital enterprise applications and tools. So, uh, I would like to ask us, pose the same question to Mr. Pereira, like what kind of, you know, how did your organization go about addressing the issue of restricted uh, access to HCPs? Uh, if you can, please. Thanks, thanks, Pratibha. I'll just expand from what Govin said, you know. See, the importance of data is getting very, very high at the moment, okay? And 
that is when we are putting the project now we are starting off the master data management along with the data lake and then we are bringing in our crm system and then we are bringing all the presentation layer we are bringing tableau getting the zoom integration with the platform we are getting the whatsapp integration sms mass mailing and all and why we are focusing on the master data i'll tell you a simple case you know many of the family names you'll see a dr gupta is very common in our country dr patel dr gupta dr shah the same doctor practices in a clinic same doctor practices in multiple hospitals earlier we were not giving that kind of importance on data duplication you know near similar matches for data and we went up creating dr amol shah as an example in four places because he went to three hospitals and one private clinic today we are matching it on the registration number mobile number near similars near likes because if i want to start taking decisions on data my data needs to be solid or else my decisions will go off hand okay and that importance around data and decision making around data is where the big switch has happened in the pharma industry yes we been behind the bfsi i would say behind the fmcg but i can tell you the pharma industry is catching up and sometimes you know the late mover advantage is what i see this pharma industry is now taking advantage of the other aspect which i see is you know empowerment which is going to go data in the hands of the medical rep if i see my journey of the past 30 years in this industry earlier the medical rep was only providing information and data in whatever hard copy soft copy some salesforce automation then we graduated to a crm system there was no return back of information data coming back to the medical rep today we are integrating data from multi sources whether it's you know med wall systems ims systems third party information system how the region performing how is territory is performing how is competition is performing what are the therapeutic therapeutic uh, areas growth what is the potential in that market you know what are the areas that he needs to improve the communication reach with the doctor and i'll tell you why today when i meet a lot of doctors to get feedback and i can tell you if you want to understand this industry you travel along with your medical rep you will understand this industry better okay i didn't have the choice to work as a medical rep that what ananta did but i worked along with the medical to understand this industry how does it work what does the doctor say to see doctor says every pharma company is coming and giving me a, mo- a mobile application something he saying it's impossible for me go on tracking 25 odd co- companies at least 25 companies medical reps meet the doctor there is no way the doctor has any bandwidth to go to 25 apps and check notification check the e detailing check some cma events and updates so you need to ensure that there is something you are doing which catches the attention of the doctor so the hybrid approach is always going to be there end of the day the doctor is going to prescribe your product not because only because of the organization you represent but also the rapport that you build the perception that you create the relationship that you create and digital is not nothing else than customer experience your business uh, you know strategy as today transformed into a digital strategy and that is where that business marrying technology digital all coming i would say together it's a very thin line between digital and technology today thin line between business and digital business strategy and digital strategy there is no there is no dividing factor and these are the changes that i see and one of the doctors told me can't you all pharma companies come together and give me one super app which gives me all information why do you all have to come why can't you all uh, you know kind of integrate and consolidate and come the good point but we never thought together the pharma company how to address this problem statement that the doctor say yeah very uh, interesting points coming from mr ferrara there and uh, i think uh, going to mr ananta i'm sure ph- pharma companies would have reached out to you for support as well like the super app which was just uh, you know mentioned so how did you go about supporting them Mr. Yeah, you know, interesting follow-up I do with Excel, right? So, uh, when you know what happening was in India, uh, we always believed um, that in India only the personal or the uh, you know the one-to-one engagement is what works. 
But and we also thought that HCPs are not digitally savvy, technologically savvy. They don't appreciate technology. All of these myths got broken because of COVID. Okay. Now what happened? We all hit with the COVID. There was no absolute connect with the HCPs happening for uh, for so many days. So, but pharma companies have to have their business as usual. So they wanted to really engage with their HCPs and and continue to you know pass on their brand messaging. But their physical got restricted. So how do we do that? So, you know, in response to that whole need, every company started using channels in a very, very, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, disconnected way, rather, I would say, is because why I'm saying that is because when you use multiple channels, which are not integrated, the data is not available for you, which gives you a 360 degree view of customer engagement, right? So as Excel said that, right, everybody wanted to use, everybody started using digital channels to HC, engage with HCPs. That is what was happening. But as a service, as a solution provider from Viva, what we gave is we had two channels. One is the email channel and one is the engage, you know, virtual engagement platform. We immediately turned on to the, all our customers here in India, they started uh, you know, embarking on it and then started training their medical reps is because medical reps are also not used to use technology to engage with HCPs. They also need to be trained, upskilled, upgraded. So they, they started training that, training them. In the meantime, uh, we also provided some of these, uh, you know, video clippings for them to send it to HCPs so that how they can also start engaging with uh, pharma companies on digital channels. So we created all of that which ensure that you know uh, the pharma company started uh, engaging with the doctors on these uh, digital channels more so they get a 360 degree view of customer engagement so that the data is available for them to take uh, further actions as they do it now good news when these channels came up the hcps in india also started embracing it with open heart open mind and they started engaging with pharma companies and in fact you know in covid i know in the in the peak of the covid they when uh, when when it started coming down pharma companies rep started going to meet the doctors physically they themselves they said that you know please avoid coming for some more time so that you know you are also not at risk we are also not at risk so they started empathizing with them and then started meeting them on digital channels and, and and that's the reason you know we thought you know we had two two channels as i mentioned we had close to about what uh, 1 million emails sent out uh, in a month with about 28% open rates and about 100000 uh, virtual meetings got executed using our channels in india with about 9 minutes average uh, time per call what that does mean? In fact, uh, Govin spoke about 30 seconds, one minute into the doctor's chamber. Digital started giving more, you know, time with the HC, uh, with the reps. I think that's the kind of uh, transformation we had, and that's the support we offered as well as as to the uh, industry to engage with HCPs. Pratibha. Uh, like Mr. Ananda just mentioned how pharma companies are uh, adopting multi-channel engagement uh, strategies. So I wanted to ask uh, uh, both Mr. Uh, Etzel and uh, Gobel, why do your companies uh, must have started using multiple channels? What was your organization's content strategy and how did your marketing and brand team manage the explosion of the content requirement, sudden explosion of content requirement? How is it? Mr. Gobel, if you can go first, please. So, uh, as you, you must be remembering the famous dialogue from uh, Vidya Bala, entertainment, entertainment, entertainment. Sim similarly, the dialogue here is for, as when it comes to SCP, content is the king. So, and of course, uh, there are various digital platforms like, say, Ananta's platform, for example, Viva, who will help uh the organizations like us cater to the content requirements of scps in 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 the most effective manner but apart from content which which will remain the king what we feel as a strategy uh treating the scp in in a personalized way see everybody has adopted digital in our lives in in multiple manners right like uh, edsel told us uh, he he wakes up in the morning with with an alarm from his mobile phone only. but not everybody like for me it will be different behavior the digital behavior will be some way common or vary but ultimately how i am going to provide my services or overall experience 
for SCP the way he expect that in his day to day life. I think that is the bottom line that we we are trying to work upon because that that's the strategy which may help us. I'm I'm still using the word may uh, help us kill a lot of noise that is around and of course uh, the SCPs are also right because their main focus area is treating the patients and not going through the 30 apps that every pharma company is going to provide with them. So content and personalization, these are the two aspects that we focus in a deep uh, and detailed manner. Of course, other digital uh, things will be there uh, pro from analytics point of view, their behavior tracking and their response tracking, that has to be a, a must for each and every uh, user throughout the ecosystem, let it be an MR or his manager or a sales national sales head. That goes without saying, but these two things uh, are, are very important for us. Same question to uh, Mr. Edson. Uh, so your points, please. Uh, like, what was your organization's content strategy and uh, how did your marketing and brand team manage the explosion of content requirement? So Pratib, I just want to be clear, you know, this industry of ours is a scientific industry huh? and information runs on facts. Huh? And I'm purposely saying this, you know, content cannot be over marketed. Huh? One is backed by research, backed by scientific data, whether it's clinical and whether it's non-clinical data, all needs to be proven facts. So content needs to be reviewed, content needs to be approved before it is shared with the, uh, with the medical fraternity HCPs. We have a medical affairs function, which reviews, we have a marketing function. And you have to maintain a very strong line of review and approval. Because, you know, sometimes the marketing teams have a, you know, kind of feeling to kind of overcome it, right? And end of the day, this is, we are very committed to patient safety, Glenmark as an organization, very committed to patient safety, product quality. There is no compromise on these things. And there are certain do's and don'ts which we have to all commit. And I again re-emphasizing the point, this is scientific information backed by clinical data. And content today I see in there are various channels. First of all, you know, we have got different ways of distributing, selling. We've got the e-commerce channels today. We've got the OT sales segments, we OTC we have, the prescription segment we have. You know, we have the distributors channel. We have got the hospital trade that we have, the modern trade that we have. So there are multiple ways of distributing multiple ways of content distribution. And one has to look at each of these stakeholders have got certain characteristics, the way they look at information, data, and the way they would like to be interacting and communicating with, okay? Still, if you ask me the distributor to this company communication is still a lot of face-to-face -face calls, you know, meetings. Whereas the stockist, it's a different model. The e-commerce channels, it's a different model. So it's not a one fit model for all the, you know, omni channels that are there today. Okay. And as an, and then I again mentioned one part, you know, patient safety is to be adhered to quality has to be in all your processes in this industry. There's, there's no other industry on this planet, which is as regulated as the pharma industry. Even the content that you distribute needs to be medically approved. It can come under a medical legal review tomorrow. You know, we have the medical legal review compliance that we have MLR process. So these are very important steps. Okay. We are in the branded business. We are in specialty business. We are in the generic business, but everything is backed by science, right? Everything is backed by my research, backed by my NDA filings, R and D data that is there, clinical data that is there. And, and the patient is very important, you know, an FMCG product never goes, you know, as a patient to consume or to help him, you know, for any, you know, issue that he has, right? So we have to keep the patient at the back of our mind. It's about human safety, human life is involved. And that is a, you know, kind of the commitment from our industry. And that is the responsibility of the pharma industry, which we can't forget. Uh, back to Mr. Ananta, you just heard from the panelists that content is important. And is there a way we are supported the industry on this? Oh, yes, very interesting topic, actually, right? When, um, and again, a couple of cues I take from itself, right? So, 
if you look at it from the multi channel engagement which is your essential question pratibha that while they engage with hcp is using multi channels the content has to be very different in all those channels which they engage with customers excel also brought out a different angle to it saying that even the different channels of distribution needs a different content altogether so that means the variety of content which need to get ready to go to market is is getting larger and larger now when it happens you also said it is a very very regulated content you know you just can't put it what you want or what you feel like it has to be supported by evidence right it is an evidence based medicine which we call it as in the pharma industry so all those communication which they develop has to have a references attached to it and that undergoes a different levels of approval whether it is medical legal regulatory some companies even compliance for that matter mlr process which again he said that so all of this has to happen now just believe when you uh, you know uh, when you are have to have a lot of content coming to the market and it has to come quickly as well is because you know you can't take your own sweet time you you need to quickly get to the market when you are using multi channels but if you are using only face to face it is just a once in a quarter you need to get the content ready but when you have multiple channels you need to be fast and if you have to be fast with a with a evidence based medicine you need to collaborate very well within the organization between marketing medical legal regulatory so if there is a solution which can help you to collaborate between all the stakeholders within the organization get the content approved and get to market fast i think that's the best way to happen and that's where you know as a solution provider we bring in a solution which is which we call it as promo match which is promotional material management wherein the content undergoes approval and all of that is a compliant content because nothing without all the levels of approval goes out into the market and and it's online people can approve it on the go while on their ptos and all of that so that way we help the industry to get faster with the content out to the market uh, in fact good news is that you know couple of uh, domestic indian companies uh, have actually onboarded this uh, our solution during the pandemic and they have been super successful in getting their content wide variety of content uh, faster to the market i think uh, you know that's been our experience here pratibha good to know that um, so uh, bringing in the next aspect of hybrid engagement uh, model as uh, as we have been speaking about hybrid engagement model and data availability it would be interesting to know if you are able to map the customer journey if yes then how you are mapping it and if no what challenges are you facing uh, mr govind if you can go first please yeah it's one of the critical aspect mapping out the customer journey so whenever there is a focus communication which is targeted at at the customer or in this case the scp if the journey is mapped it allows me to one to to an extent define his behavior the way uh, the the organization is willing to number two give him at most freedom wherein every action of his every step that he is taking in the journey it leads him to uh, to a objective that the organization is uh, setting out for and that's where we are trying to use some of the tools where the journey building uh, is 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 the part of the process like salesforce pareto is one one such thing where we are trying to have this rolled out wherein the journey mapping is being done and then we 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 are trying to lead the scps uh, go through those journey and have have that analytics available with us uh, in terms of uh, the output or the effectiveness of of a particular i would say a digital consumption that i am i am targeting for the scp so early days for us i would say but uh, we we are trying to have those uh, verified as part of our few of the pilots that we are doing here at us the customer journey as i mentioned each of our business models uh, and each of the omni channels that we have the journey is different okay and we are using this data lake and master data management to better manage our process okay and we are revamping our crm systems as we speak revamping how we want to collect data how we want to consume data how we want to distribute data because if 
and i think this process you know during covid has also gone through a certain change and if i would look at the process 2019 versus 2021 and 2022 i see a change and yes that hybrid model is there to stay but the hybrid which was there working before 2019 is very different today and i think still the, there will be a further evolution in the next two years on this process that is there i think you know some of the regulations that are there and also don't forget we also have the trade associations which are very strong in our country how is that you know the e-commerce going to work out how is that going to pan out how is the online channels of you know we have the net megs and all this 1mg and all working out it also has an impact to the way we also do business right end of the day our focus is around drug discovery around research around manufacturing distribution and you know efficiency is in the supply chain is also very important and very crucial and which will also have a a consequence to this entire journey and this entire digital play out that is going to happen you know i think in the next 2 years it will mature and each of the pharma companies will start learning from each other they are already learning from each other and this is the thing i think which will you know like the companies like viva and iqv and all the other partners that work with us are also going to evolve in this journey okay and because the maturity of the systems will happen when the process matures and when the industry matures and there are going to be coexistence of multiple models and i think the percentages of revenue from the online channels e-commerce is definitely go up, going to move up as things go forward how the regulations are going to play also is going to be an important aspect huh? and how our trade associations are going to work going forward yeah very important uh, point there is yes, uh, i think it's going to evolve a lot it in 2 to 3 years yes so um, going forward i would like to know given that the markets are opening up uh, physical meetings are getting back and how do you foresee the future of hcp engagements are going to happen like uh, immediately how it's going to be there and how it's going to evolve like uh, mr excel if you can go first yes yeah. so you know pratibha as i told you i mean the way i'm seeing it you know when i visit some of the doctors we are interacting with our field medical reps as zsm business head cluster heads and each of the markets are also different huh? your east market the north market west market south market is also unique huh? and even though the doctors chambers have opened up uh, doctors are still open to have an online meeting okay and i think the online meeting the doctor gives the highest focus because when i visit some of the super specialists i feel sorry for the medical reps sometimes four and five medical reps are standing and they are asked to present as govin said 30 seconds and you know it's not easy to present i know the medical rep has got a e detailing you know probably 30 40 pages and maybe 30 40 different presentations and probably different targets to present to the doctor so in the 30 seconds that you get when you're in his chamber is very different to getting 3 minutes on the online channel so this is going to be there and you know i'm not saying you know the cme events also have run on a digital platform i see those continuing huh? i think the physical aspect of cme events probably will be reducing going forward and that is where i see the switch because there is one thing the online brings in the efficiency there's no you know the physical logistics is a tremendous cost and i think a lot of time gets you know exhausted in that i know some of the agencies would be losing money in that the physical channels and you know the physical events but yes i think a hybrid is here to stay uh, some regions are adopting more of digital some regions are adopting less some doctors preferences are you know what i want to have an online meeting you can do the e detailing to me online you can share with me content i could see it later on in my spare time so there are different you know i would say modes you know depends also on the personal preferences of the hcp hospitals have got a different way of running business different you know the same doctor who has a private clinic same doctor who is visiting a hospital as a specialist you know they have different ways and means to interact with the uh, medical reps and you know interact with even the the distribution channels that are there so we as an organization need to be in a very dynamic mode there is no one mode that is best or super best or there is no one solution for everything 
for each and every of the solution, you will have to be very flexible and extremely dynamic. The distributors are there, our stockists are there, very strong associations in this country. You cannot break those associations overnight. Okay. And I think the amount of investment from the startups that are getting into all these online channels and on the e-commerce platforms, you know, I think it's going to be, because there is ease today. I don't need to go to a physical chemist. I can order it online. As long as there's a proper insurance of quality and, you know, the timeline of delivery is, you know, is there. I can send my prescription through WhatsApp. So there's a lot of efficiency in that, Pratiba. And I think the efficiency is where and the cost of ownership is going to come down, then automatically adoption of digital will, will enhance further. We are in dynamic mode. So I would like to uh, get, uh, get to the same question to Mr. Joshi. I did uh, pose the same question. How you are seeing, uh, given the markets are opening up and the physical meetings are getting back, so how do you foresee the future of HCP uh, uh, engagement uh, going to happen? It's definitely going to be hybrid, uh, a lot of mix and match. Uh, one thing is for sure that digital provides a lot of flexibility for both the audiences, that is for the, for the consumer also and for the organization also. So that flexibility part will, will I think, help the overall process. Um, in this, again, uh, KOL management is one thing wherein I according to me the digital uh, way will be more efficient because digital will tend to generate a lot of meaningful data even if in physical uh, the detailing and all those things are going to happen but still there is a process part and there is a compliance part uh, that the end, po end user in, in this case the MR he is going to follow and that compliance uh, variance is always there but as Edsel told, it's going to be a hybrid approach with a lot of flexibility being on, on offer. Yeah. So I was asking Mr. Ananta, as a technological uh, provider, what's your view on this? Yeah. So, I mean, most of the points are already covered by Edsel and Govind in their, in their way and they are industry veterans as well. So. Um, as they said that hybrid is going to stay and it is definitely going to stay is what we are seeing. Yes, face-to-face -face is getting opened up. Reps are visiting the physicians and meeting them, but to the definitely not to the extent of what they were meeting before COVID. Okay, that's for sure. But we also have uh, started using uh, digital channels to engage with them and that brings in a lot of efficiencies. I totally agree with them as well. So uh, the best thing have can happen is to get the data of engagement with HCPs and you know you analyze that data and take a look at it. That data uh, throws a lot of uh, information specific to uh, the channel preferences from the HCPs perspective. Now you know what they prefer and accordingly you can engage with them and then you know get going with it. And that gives you a more visibility as far as branding is concerned, more so from the time perspective aspect. Okay. Um, as an industry, we totally agree and believe on it that you know twenty percent of our I mean customers provide eighty percent of the business, and and we continue to uh, believe that uh, that works. So having said that, I think digital engagement or a hybrid engagement becomes even more important for those key opinion leaders, A class uh, doctors across uh, across geographies. Uh, and, and I think Edsel mentioned a very important stuff that, you know, it depends between South, East, North and West. So uh, the data also provides you that visibility. Where is the uptake of uh, uh, the, are the preferences of uh, engagement with digital is higher so that you can, you can actually focus more on, on that and get the best out of the, uh, the, you know, engagement you can do with your HCPs. I think that's going to be the way forward. Yes, I totally agree. So uh, the question I would like to ask you is like, what's your view on oper operationalizing digital excellence as a pharma company? Uh, how do you see that? Yeah, so Pratiba, we've set up a commercial excellence organization. And I believe excellence is that you should keep that as a motto in everything that you do. Personal life first, then it will flow into your professional life. Okay, And what is excellence about? ensuring you're diligent in what you're doing, ensuring there's a proper review, ensuring there's a quality process, 
ensuring there's a very strong process driven supported by a documentation proper training you know doing a proper proof of concept so like before we are you know selecting a system as an example we are having a business case we do a proof of concept we are not only seeing whether what are my use cases how do i adopt it in the organization what is going to be my cost can that cost be absorbed by my business see end of the day a digital adoption will work only when it's commercially viable and bringing business value to the table okay covid is a one time in my opinion what people put effort for digital but if digital has to sustain there has to be a cost benefit and that cost benefit needs to have proper use case analysis there has to be proper roi to whatever we do okay because you cannot invest on both when you definitely digital brings in transparency brings in efficiency but you cannot say you know what i will go to the 2019 model pre covid and also have a full expansion of digital then you are basically you know putting double the cost double effort double investment that is unsustainable today's business you need to look at cost in every single aspect cost efficiency you know speed of delivery customer experience this is all factors which are very important end of the day a business you could have a great product but if it is not commercially viable and not get, you know gaining customer attention not getting customer uh, the customer view is not getting caught not meeting customer requirement it's not going to move you can't push a product for the rest the product needs to you know always a uh, kind of fulfill a requirement to a customer requirement and that is one of the aspects where i say customer need customer perception customer insights customer insights our company pays a lot of attention to very essential to get feedback from customer i want to know what my customer thinks about my product the way i the way i'm connecting with him the way i'm you know what is he, his perception of my product how what does he think first about glenmark as a company when he thinks about glenmark and that's the aspect is you know and perception is one thing you cannot change huh? once it is gone ingrained into somebody and who is the medical rep he is the ambassador of my company my medical rep needs to be trained my medical rep needs to adopt digital not a push of digital to him he should see the benefits of digital he should say yes digital is helping me in my day to day life helps me to plan helps me to organize it helps me to free up some of my time which i was you know spending carrying that bag of 10 kgs and walking for kilometers and you know with the various transportation methods going from the stockist to the chemist to the retailer sometimes to the distributor sometimes to doctor chambers today he is able to you know kind of block the doctor's calendar in a time which probably the doctor would not have given in a face to face meeting so these are the things and also it's a lot of points lead to behavioral aspects whether they it's behavior medical reps behavior companies behavior and also the overall process maturity and i think the instead of the top down approach for digital adoption i would say a bottom up approach would be even more meaningful end of the day the grassroots needs to get the benefit of digital and digital efficiency and cost benefit value so uh, i would like to uh, for the same question as a soft but as a software company what's your uh, views on oper- operationalizing digital excellence uh, mr ananta chi um thanks for that question pratibha i guess the important aspect which excel brought about is uh, commercial excellence right so um as a as a software company working with life sciences industry in general and pharma um business in particular our endeavor is always to support their uh, you know agenda of commercial excellence which which definitely in my view has got three pillars one is the sales marketing as well as medical i think we tr- strongly believe that you know hybrid is going to stay and and it has definitely has got a lot of inferences which means that you know you need to train your rep uh, and on how to use digital how effectively used to use digital and how you Uh, at the end of the day how you offer i mean what is the commerce you know the customer experience you deliver is what is going to be there if that has to be institutionalized 
I think, uh, you know, um, it, it requires a good amount of investment and focus, both from the, uh, from the leadership team and as well as the bottoms up, which uh, Edsel mentioned. Uh, in, the, in the conquest of achieving that, uh, as a software company, uh, Viva continues to uh, innovate and bring innovative uh, products and solutions, which will help them to achieve their commercial excellence agenda. In the process, you know, there are a lot of push which is now happening. We wanted to bring in pull channels as well, wherein HCP start uh, engaging with the pharma company uh, uh, professionals uh, from their end uh, and then asking for meetings and, and make them to meet. I think that's the best thing to happen. It's a wish, it's a wish to do, but yes, I think uh, that's in the direction we are with uh, we are going ahead with and uh, in our endeavor to support the excellent you know cost commercial excellence agenda of pharma companies. Well, thanks a lot, Mr. Ananta, and thanks to uh, both the panel, uh, all the three panelists here who had, uh, you know, uh, given their time and, uh, you know, uh, gave us deep insights on the HCP engagement, which was very crucial. Thanks a lot, uh, once again, from the ET Health World team. Thank you. Uh, it was quite indeed an enriching uh, and uh, uh, panel with a lot of insights coming in on the future engagements of HCPs. And we had uh, thanks to all the delegates who had been actively participating throughout the panel discussion and, you know, sending us a lot of queries. Uh, we would like to take a few of them, not all of them, because of the paucity of time. And uh, I have Mr. Ananda uh, Nema, the country manager, India Viva Systems, to take up uh, the questions. and. <clears throat> Uh, uh, Mr. Ananta, I would like to ask a few of the delegates question and one of it is like, what is the starting point of collecting insights for digital interaction? Do you feel the rep reps feedback into CRM is good enough uh, feed for digital strategy? This is one of the questions which has come up. No, it's an excellent question, actually. Um, digital in India, um, we have been discussing uh, for the last 50 minutes or so. Uh, from a pharma perspective, it is very, very low. So pre-COVID, we never heard of engaging, uh, pharma companies engaging with doctors on digital front. Now, COVID helped us to get onto the digital engagement journey. And I think, I think that's, that's what, which has happened in the last two years. Now, if you have to really know whether that is, uh, what, what should be our digital strategy, once you start using digital channels, then you would know what you need to make it as a strategy. Now, for the first uh, step for it is that you give the channel and the rep feeds in some information which comes back to you. And over a period of time, when you start collecting that data, it becomes a, a solid data for you to look at how uh, customers are appreciating or what channel customer is appreciating on the digital engagement. Accordingly, you can form your digital strategy. Now, I have seen some of the questions coming, on, coming through the chat box uh, as well that uh, digital fatigue and uh, how do we engage po post COVID era and all of that. Now, if you would have collected that data and then, you know, kind of did some analytics on that and decided on your strategy, how to go about it, which customer uh, prefers what channel of engagement, then I think you are uh, even post COVID era. I don't think it is post COVID era, but uh, yeah, if you have to call that way, uh, I guess, that data would come uh, very handy for you to have a very clear cut strategy for uh, on a digital front. How do you engage with the HCPs using the hybrid model? Yeah, uh, very pertinent points coming in from uh, you, Mr. Nanta. One more concern by a delegate here is I he said, I struggle with duplicate leads on a CRM system. I'll be smaller than 6K, that's what he has mentioned also, but I have found analytics and especially fuzzy matching to reduce the error rate. It takes time and garbage in and garbage out plays also, but analytics helps long term. What is your comments? It's a very pertinent question for a pharma industry in India. Unlike the Western markets where you have uh, uh, you know the HCP data available for you to buy and start using it so that you know you don't have duplicates on that front. Now, having said that, in India, as per the MCI, we have about 1.2 million doctors who have passed out and practicing. And, and out of the 1.2 million doctors, 8.8 .8 million doctors are practicing. 
Uh, and and I think Edsel bought up saying that you know the same doctor spelled differently and and I agree if you have a garbage in obviously garbage out, right? So and so unfortunately in an India kind of a market we do not have uh, a HCP data available for pharma companies to take it and get, take it into consideration while they engage it. So till that kind of a product uh, going to be available in India. I think what you are currently doing is the way, way forward, doing a muzzy, you know, fuzzy matching within your uh, customer database, which you have. But if you have a strong CRM solution, uh, you know, that fuzzy matching uh, can, can help you significantly to kind of remove the duplicacies, redundancies in your HCP data. Thereby, you know, you, you can get to get closer to the best data you can have. Uh, but that's a problem which is there in the industry. Uh, it's not just you. Uh, I think most of the industry undergoing this pain. Uh, hold on for some time. You will have some good news. So uh, I think they have to wait for the good news now. So as uh, you said, Mr. Ananta, there was a lot of patience on this digital fatigue. There is digital fatigue that has set in amongst HCPs due to an exodus of webinars and digital activities from multiple pharma companies. So what are the differentiated engaging digital tools that can hold the HCP loyalty for a long time? Can we look into a digital engagement product pi uh, pipeline approach to address this? A very important question. Yeah, I think very pertinent to the topic of discussion today. So if you look at from the, I, I would like to take a step back and uh, look at it uh, when, when we were hit with uh, COVID and absolute no access uh, to the HCPs. And in fact, HCPs were also not uh, very, very uh, comfortable using digital channels. But good news is that HCP started embracing digital, started engaging with pharma companies on digital channels. Now, what do we call it as digital channels? We keep talking about it. Um, digital channels are nothing but your email, your virtual meeting platforms, your webinars, you know, even you call it as your WhatsApp communication or your SMS communication, all of this which, you, which companies do to engage with HCPs are digital in nature, right? Now, because we were hit with the zero access to HCPs, every company started using all of these channels to the best of their capabilities to ensure that they are always on top of the brand recall as far as the HCPs are concerned. Now, what happened was that everybody started bombarding and after a period of time, it kind of set, uh, you know, digital fatigue uh, seems to be have set in. Now, what differentiates you is that, you know, I have had interactions with most of the, some of the top KOLs as well. Do they have a digital fatigue? Now, they say, yes, they get bombarded with so many companies to be engaged on these channels. Uh, but what they see is that most of the, uh, you know, channels which companies use to engage have got more or less the similar kind of a content across. Uh, obviously, if you have same content going in your email, you know, you're going in your virtual meetings, webinars and everything, what happens, doctors get bo you know, bored about it and then they will say, hey, look, this is too much for me to engage with you. So the differentiating factor should be the content which you have. Uh, which can, which, which has to be different across channels of engagement, so that the doctor get excited doing it. Uh, not just that, the data which you collected over a lot, over a period of time, that analytics on 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 top of that, would you if you take a look at it and then you know decide on what the preference channel preference by the HCPs and start engaging with them. I think that makes uh, a good strategy to engage with HCPs. Now, if you look at what digital engagement product pipeline approach to address this. There are enough and more channels already available for you to engage. Uh, in fact, I mentioned in the last point that you know all the channels which pharma companies are using to engage with HCPs today are push in nature. Whether it is uh, emails or you know virtual meetings, webinars, WhatsApp, and SMS, it all goes from the uh, reps to the doctors. Uh, but if there is an opportunity for the doctor to come back and engage with the uh, pharma companies. I think that's the that's going to the future, and that's what I said in my in the last question you asked Pratiba that we are working on those tools to bring it along with our uh, set of uh, you know multi-channel customer engagement suite. Um, you will have uh, exciting time times ahead. I can guarantee you that. Yeah. So uh, again, there's another interesting uh, question. They have said uh, they have asked today. The, uh, today the HCP is loaded with content. Again, it's about content. And what are the key differentiating factors for content? I think it was touched upon the earlier question. If you can yeah. just brief it. 
you know it's important again uh, content is the king in in the pharma industry and i think that's what uh, uh, mr joshi also mentioned right content content and content so what differentiates the what differentiates you uh, is is again the statistics and analytics which you have what, which customer prefers what type of content uh, and uh, what type of content availability you have to engage with your customers and you, you, you know people i have seen companies using a very flat pdf files to engage with hcps or you know just send articles and you know um, uh, reference material and and all of those but today uh, if, if you look at some of the companies uh, they have uh, very very high level of content highly engaging content you know uh, interactive content more so uh, in the sense when they, when the rep is engaging with the doctor and and if they are discussing a case study they pick up a patient case and doctor prefers a patient case and then it takes the discussion accordingly depending on that patient case so it's going to be interactive content which is going to be making uh, the uh, hcp excited uh, i think that makes the the uh, engagement even better for hcps as well okay we, uh, there was a mention about uh, super app uh, by mr edsel pereira so uh, here is a question for you do you see doctors are open to super app only for content or brand reminders i guess the excel bought up the super app uh, um, topic right so what it essentially talks about it instead of doctor uh, downloading uh, um, each and every app, i mean many apps for each of those companies which they engage with rather than having one one app now this app if you see if that has to happen all the pharma companies have to come together and then create one app wherein the hcp has an access to engage with the companies of his choice or the reps of his choice and and engage with them now would that be a possibility yes i think uh, it it's tough but i think it's it's it can be the way forward uh, looking at it in fact you know uh, as a technology solution provider we we in fact we we would like to have that Uh, happening if all pharma companies have to come together and align on a single solution which can give a super app to the industry i think that's the best thing to happen uh, we have to wait and watch how this uh, uh, you know gets unfolded but in in again that particular super app should not be used to to kind of push only the reminders uh, to engage with hcps i think they should selectively send um the hcp preferred content even it could be a short content it could be a long content via pdf files uh, all of that uh, that's going to be the way uh, that's going to be the way forward so i would i would strongly suggest the super app if it comes up it should be more for the content not for the brand reminders um thanks a lot uh, dr anand uh, mr nanta for you know uh, taking up some of the questions due to paucity of time we will not be able to take all the questions but i know hcp engagement is a ever evolving uh, you know area and uh, topic so we might have more discussions on this uh, in the future and uh, thanks a lot for all the panelists uh, who have come in and had discussed on this pertinent topic thanks a lot from epl world side thank you Thanks for the way it was nice uh, uh, participating in this panel discussion i'm sure the attendees also have a good amount of messaging to take back home um, wish you all uh, the great rest of the day thank you so much thank you